Happy New Year, and welcome to another Foldit Lab Report. I am B. Kep, here at the Institute for Protein Design in Seattle, Washington. Uh, unfortunately, my colleague in H is taking a well-deserved vacation, so it's just me this month. In the news, we are planning a new experiment to test binders for the IL-2 receptor. The IL-2 receptor is a natural protein found on the surface of human immune cells, and it's a very important target for certain cancer immunotherapy drugs. The receptor itself is composed of three different chains, the alpha, beta, and gamma. And the interplay of these three chains results in some kind of complex behavior. But it seems like the interaction between IL-2 drugs and the alpha chain are responsible for some of the ugly side effects associated with these kind of immunotherapy. So, if we had a protein binder that could stick to the alpha chain and block these interactions, we might be able to reduce some of those ugly side effects. So we selected about 115 folded designs for the IL-2 receptor alpha chain, and we'll be testing those in the lab. We also use some computational methods to make some variations on these folded designs. So in the end, we have about 2,000 proteins that we can test for IL-2 receptor binding in the lab. In the next month or so, we should have some real-world data about whether any of these designs actually bind to the target. Also, in case you missed it, on our blog we recently posted a sneak peek into an upcoming Foldit tool that is currently in development. The trim tool is meant for large proteins, proteins that are normally too big for a typical folded puzzle. Due to all of the scientific calculations that go on under the hood, Foldit really starts to slow down for proteins that are larger than 100 or 200 residues. But most natural proteins are bigger than this 200 residue limit, so this is a severe limitation on the types of problems that we can tackle in Foldit. The upcoming trim tool will allow us to break down a big protein into smaller manageable chunks so you can fold up maybe one domain at a time and then later stitch them all back together into a complete model. This could be a game changer for Foldit and the types of problems we can normally tackle, especially in areas like electron density where data sets tend to come from these very large proteins. And with that, I want to jump straight into this month's design of the month. This month we have an anonymous design for puzzle 2078. This is a CD47 binder design puzzle. Um, so when we open this up, I'm going to go to our protein design view preset. Um, so right off the bat, this looks like a solid protein design. Uh, we see that the surface of this protein is, is mostly blue hydrophilics and that the core is very tightly packed orange hydrophobics. Um, lots of helices and secondary structure with tight short loops. Uh, these are all characteristics that bode well for protein folding. So we think that this design stands a pretty good chance of folding up into the three helix bundle that's designed here. Um, we do see that the binding surface has a couple of orange hydrophobic residues on the surface where it comes into contact. Um, so here is a delicate balance between uh, binder folding and being able to stick to the target. So these exposed hydrophobics will make for sticky binding to the target, um, but they could also confound folding if there's too many surface hydrophobics, then this protein might aggregate or misfold or stick to other things in the cell that are not this target. Um, this looks pretty good to me. There are some uh, hydrophilics sprinkled in here which should improve the solubility and behavior of this design. Um, the one thing that is really difficult about this CD47 target is that, here if I can zoom out, um, is that the surface is largely polar. Um, the surface of our target is mostly blue polar residues and there are only a couple of these orange hydrophobics which mark kind of sticky handholds for our binding protein. Um, and I think what I notice is this, this design really focuses in on this exposed leucine right here. Um, this is a leucine that's kind of sticking up and just you know, begging to be bound by a binder protein. Um, so if we look at what this design has done, we see that they've created a very snug home for this exposed leucine on the target. 
Um, and this is nice. This is what we like to see. This is making, this is now burying this leucine in a binding pocket on our own binder, um, which should make for some very tight binding interactions. Um, conversely, on the binder side, we see this tryptophan here, which fits into a nice little groove here on the target. So this tryptophan is also able to make a lot of nice hydrophobic interactions. The next thing is I'm looking for buns. I'm looking for hydrophilic atoms, polar atoms like red oxygens and blue nitrogens that are buried and cannot make hydrogen bonds. Um, and it looks like this aspartate right here in the center of the binding pocket um, could normally give us some trouble. Like we said, this, this protein target is very difficult because its surface is mostly hydrophilic. So it's going to be difficult to design a binder that can stick to the surface without creating buns. Um, however, this target does a great job. Uh, we have the serine and, or threonine and this tryptophan here which are satisfying this buried aspartate. So this aspartate looks happy to me. Even though it's buried in the protein core, it's able to make hydrogen bonds. Um, similarly, this other tyrosine here is buried by the binder, but is able to make hydrogen bonds. Um, and, uh, and there are some other polar interactions maybe with, with other spaces on the protein. These peripheral hydrogen bonds are not as strong. We don't necessarily know if they will form. Um, uh, because these side chains can swing out and they can be replaced by water. Water can come in and make some of these hydrogen bonds. Um, but by and large, I really like the shape complementarity of this binder against the target and the exceptional satisfaction of all these polar residues. All in all, this is an excellent design. Very excited to see uh, designs of this quality coming out of our binder design puzzles. Please share your favorite designs with scientists. We love to see which designs you think are the most noteworthy, regardless of how they score or how they stack up on the puzzle leaderboards. That's all we have for this month. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.